Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Eosheen Blade 185 racing drone. So this is uh, one of the newer models from Eosheen. Just came out on Banggood about uh, less than a month ago. It came rather quickly. The instructions look pretty decent. Let's take a closer look at these. I got the um, almost ready to fly version. It does not come with the transmitter and the GPS, but it does come with everything else. And I intend to fly this with my Tyrannus and uh, probably a X4 RSB uh, receiver. We got battery charger, 1300 three cell. Only a 30C, pretty low discharge. Some accessories here. I think this is for the uh, USB connector for the OSD. Got a couple of hex keys here. Hex one, get four zip ties. This looks like the um, connector for the receiver. They even include a micro USB cable. Circular polarized antenna. I'm not sure if it's right handed or left handed. The power cord for the battery charger and boo, it's a European plug. Can't use that here in the US. Eight propellers. HD camera mount with the vibration dampeners. And here's the quad itself. It looks pretty nice. So this is a very interesting product. I, I really like the design of this. That's kind of why I bought it. And also, I wanted to see what it would be like to buy something already pre-built versus buying all the components and uh, building it yourself. Which is, you know, mostly what I've been doing on my channel is buying a lot of individual parts and uh, building these models from scratch. But I realize I'm sort of ignoring an entire segment of the uh, hobbyists that just want to buy something and fly it. I thought this would be a good model to show off. Um, it has a lot of features that are um, more hobby grade versus uh, off the shelf. And for example, it includes a NAS32, comes with an OSD, it comes with these uh, programmable LEDs. So some of the uh, specs on this model are uh, 1806 2300 kV motors here. It's going to be running uh, four inch uh, propellers. This is a uh, 520 line TVL CMOS camera. Very small. Comes with a built in video transmitter, 200 milliwatts. So the uh, flight controller is a NAS32 Rev6 and I believe it's the 10 DOF version, which includes the compass and barometer. Now, from the looks of it, it appears that all of the circuitry is um, built into this bottom plate here, which is, I believe it's fiberglass, not carbon fiber. So, I have to open it up and take a look inside. Uh, but that is one of the things that would be a concern is in a crash if you broke one of these arms here um, This is actually a circuit board that you actually would be breaking in and it contains all of your electronics So you would have to replace the entire board and I don't know if uh, Spare parts are available yet, and I'm not sure what the cost of that will be So that could be something uh, to be concerned about but it is, it appears to be held together. So basically what you got here is a carbon fiber uh, top plate here or mid plate. We have these plastic shroud here that's protecting the inside electronics and this bottom uh, electronics uh, fiberglass plate here. And it's held in, these are held together with a number of screws 
across the whole thing here. So let's see what we got. We got one of the four in the corners by the motor. And you got two, four, eight. So a total of 12 screws going through from the bottom to the, the this top section here. So it should be fairly rigid, but obviously we'll have to see how durable it is after it's been crashed. You can already tell that getting the battery in here is going to be a bit of a hassle. And then, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a hassle to wrap this Velcro strap through the other side. And not let it catch until its battery is secure. There we go. And so I might need to do some additional Velcro inside here so that the battery is not sliding around. You don't want the uh, CG changing on you while you're in flight. The uh, camera angle is adjustable. It's about 45 degree here. And you can go forward like that. So that's nice. Now, this shroud here for the front is, it's not thin plastic, it's fairly thick, but you gotta wonder how durable this is gonna be in a crash if you're hitting it straight down. Now, yeah, this, that, don't think it's gonna survive a very hard nose in if you go straight in. But most of the time you're probably gonna be going at an angle, hitting one of the arms. Only time will tell. But this plastic shroud is being used to mount the camera. So we'll have to see if maybe there's other options for maybe a different camera mount perhaps. Um, I'll take a look, I'll look into that. Maybe we could take this top plate off and maybe set up a different camera mounting system here for like a, instead of a CMOS camera, maybe a CCD camera. The other potential design flaw here that I see is this video transmitter um, antenna connection here, this SMA connector. In a bad crash, you hit this bottom part right here and I could definitely see the SMA connector being ripped off from the circuit board. So I may I may want to put some epoxy here just to give it a little more strength. Although I'm not even sure if that's going to help that much. In a in a if you hit this corner, if you hit the the tail end of the quad and just the right angle, pretty sure this thing is going to snap right off. I wish they would have uh, put this in a, a better location. This is not a good spot for this. So I'm just going to take this apart and see what the uh, circuit board looks like. It looks like we got the camera connector and these other connectors that are on the top are for the battery and the receiver holding these these together just turn this to the side it doesn't look like there's any connectors on it underneath here so I can't pull those off So here's a closer look at the circuit board and definitely it's an all-in-one. The ESCs, the flight controller are all soldered onto this one board. So if this thing breaks, you gotta get a whole new board. And you can see back there is the uh, video transmitter that's also soldered on. Okay, so right here next to the video transmitter are the dip switches for channel selection. 
and uh, this, this is also for changing your mode from PPM or SBUS and it corresponds to this uh, these settings here in the manual and uh, these are the channel so here are the motors the machines 1806 2300 kV okay so the uh, total weight of this is 234 grams without the battery there's the battery on there and we're now up to 345 grams okay let's get some measurements of the motor distances looks like it's about 185 millimeters just like what it should be so the distance between the front arms is about 135 millimeters it looks like about 135 millimeters and the distance between the rear motors is also about 135 millimeters and the distance between the front motors and rear motors is about it looks like about 120 27, 26, 27 millimeters. So not quite a square. Okay, so now I'm going to connect this up to CleanFlight and take a look at what the default settings are like.